climate change expert Guy McPherson from the University of Arizona. Some label him an eco-terrorist. Others say he's an anarchist. But could he just be a realist? Guy's in New Zealand on a speaking tour and joins me now. Guy, great to see you again. Likewise, Paul. Last time I spoke to you, um, 2014, and you sort of, you know, snatched any hope of a future from me and my family, um, it, was, it was doom and gloom. Has anything changed since then in your, in your account of things? Oh, yes. The situation is far worse than it was then. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so essentially, to paraphrase, we're just all wasting our time even talking about climate change and global warming and sea rising. Well, I, I'd appreciate the opportunity for people to know what's going on in the world. That's why I do what I do. And so I don't think we, we need to not talk about it. Uh, I think we need to let people know that what is underway is But it's futile. Well, action is, is futile except with respect to our personal selves and how we feel about ourselves. Yes, action is the antidote to despair, said Edward Abbey, the desert mm. anarchist. Mm. Are you an anarchist? I am, and I know what that means. Mm. It's not chaos. Anarchism is not a, not a romantic notion, but an, an idea, a, a way of living that is, has been proven successful for three million years of the human experience. If you're right, then you are also surely wrong. I mean, you say that it's important that we talk about it so that we know what's going on, but I don't think that's why we talk about it. If you're right, the reason we talk about it is in an attempt essentially to fool ourselves into thinking that we can actually stave it off. Well, uh, it depends on your perspective. Again, uh, my perspective is that there is nothing to be done in terms of preserving the human species l more than a few more years. Um, other people think that actions will um, increase their own longevity, which might be true depending upon what they do and where they move to. Um, but I, th I think in terms of the human race, we're done. It's locked in. It's been locked in for a long time. We're in the midst of the sixth mass extinction. Okay, we'll talk about your time frame in a moment because I guess that, it, and that, uh, you've already indicated that's something that does change because things have got worse rapidly, more rapidly than perhaps you originally thought. You almost imply in some of your writing that we have the arrogance to believe that the future of the planet and the future of humankind is the same thing. In reality, you hold quite a positive outlook for the future of the planet, just not with us on it. Uh, absolutely, yes. I mean, we've had humans on the planet, our species, for about 200,000 years. The universe is 13.8 billion years old. We're, a we're just a moment. Spent. We're a moment in time. We really are. I mean, it's a geological blink, and, and it looks like we're beyond geological at this point and, and into the real blink. With humans gone, and presumably not only humans, but other life mm. as we know it, as we know it, will the planet actually heal itself, given enough millennia? It will, it will take millions of years, as it has following previous mass extinction events. But, but I've no doubt there will be a thriving planet again. It's just for a few million years, there will be very small things, like microbes and bacteria and fungi. As I look at you now, and I, I mean, what you say seems logical, much more logical than those who's, who say we can stand in the way of this, we can shout at the tide not to come in. Um, but I, I really don't believe it because part of me, of course, being a human being, being an illogical creature, um, thinks I can't imagine that none of this will exist and so I will pretend that it doesn't exist. Is that what you fight when you go around, when you, when you, when you lecture people around the world? Of, of course, and mostly it's people who look a lot like you and me, people who are pretty privileged and can't imagine this amount of privilege going away. And so that's the difficulty. This is all we've ever known. We were born into this. Mm. I call it born into captivity. Mm. And we didn't have any choice about the matter, right? We didn't vote on whether we got to show up at this point in history. So it's difficult to imagine anything different than this, much less the, the kind of... Uh, situation that is certain to arise in the not too distant future. Well, it's, the other thing that it's hard to imagine, even though we have absolute proof of it all, all around us, is that we are but a moment in time because we know history. We know that we will not last forever. Right. So we potentially know some of the future. How much time do we have? How much time does the human race have? I can't imagine there will be a human on the planet in 10 years. Um, I, I suspect it'll be... No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you say 10 years? Yes, yes, in my out loud voice even. Yes, I can't... You know, we're headed for a temperature within that span that is at or near the highest temperature experienced on Earth in the last 2 billion years. That's a, at least an order of magnitude faster than occurred during the Great Dying 252 but, million but years. But you are suggesting then that the temperature increase will be phenomenal over the next few years. Oh, yes. 
Yeah, this is exponential change, and we have difficulty coming to grips with exponential change. Because no, no, I understand the, the, yeah. the, the, the term exponential, and I understand the term change. What I, what I don't want to understand is, is your time frame. <laughs> sure. I mean, it, w why are you even I wasting time here in the studio? Why the hell are we all here? Uh, if it's only, seriously, if it's only 10 years, what the hell are you doing here? You're dragging your wife around the bloody world <laughs> talking about this. You've only got 10 years. Shouldn't you be at home with your kids? Uh, I, I, I don't have kids because uh, I could see this oh, sort of thing of coming a long time ago. Stab me in the heart now. <laughs> Seriously, 10 years? No, we, we don't have 10 years. Oh, I, I encourage people to pursue excellence, to pursue love, to pursue what they love to do. I don't think these are, are crazy ideas, actually. And, and I also encourage people to remain calm because nothing is under control, certainly not under our control.